The courtroom was silent as the judge read out the verdict, guilty on all counts. The psycho teenager who had killed their entire family reacted to the sentence with a blank expression. It was a shocking turn of events for the community, and the trial was closely followed by the media and the public alike, as the reality of the sentence sank in. The courtroom was filled with a mix of emotions, from shock to disbelief, and the psycho teenager's reaction was closely observed. The psycho teenager, who we shall refer to as Alex, had been just 17 years old when they brutally ended the lives of their parents and younger siblings. The motive for the killings remained unclear, and the trial had been gripping with testimonies from witnesses, forensic evidence, and expert opinions. The prosecution had presented a strong case, and the jury had unanimously found Alex guilty on multiple counts of murder. As the judge delivered the sentence, Alex sat quietly in the defendant's box, showing no outward signs of emotions. The room was filled with tension as the judge continued, You will be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The words hung in the air, and Alex's expression remained unchanged. The magnitude of the sentence was immense, and it was clear that Alex's life would never be the same again. The courtroom erupted in gasps and murmurs, with many expressing shock at the severity of the punishment for a teenager. The media frenzy that had surrounded the case now intensified as reporters scrambled to capture every detail of Alex's reaction. As the reality of the sentence sank in, Alex's facade began to crack. Tears welled up in their eyes, and their shoulders slumped. It was the first time that any emotion had been displayed throughout the trial. Alex's defense attorney quickly moved to comfort them, but it was evident that the weight of the sentence was crushing. The courtroom was filled with a palpable sense of sorrow, not just for the victims and their families, but also for Alex. In the days that followed, the media delved into Alex's background trying to understand what could have led a teenager to commit such heinous crimes. It was revealed that Alex had a history of mental health issues, including depression and anxiety. They had also experienced a troubled family life with reports of abuse and neglect. However, none of these factors excused the actions that had led to the killings, and the community struggled to reconcile the image of a troubled teenager with the brutal reality of the crimes committed. Inside the prison, Alex's life took a drastic turn. They were placed in a maximum security facility, separated from the general population for their own safety. The initial shock of the sentence had worn off, but the weight of the reality of spending the rest of their life behind bars began to sink in. Alex struggled to come to terms with her actions and the consequences of their choices became starkly apparent. Alex's behavior in prison was closely monitored, and they received counseling and therapy to address their mental health issues. Over time, they began to show remorse for their actions, expressing deep regret for the pain that they had caused. They reached out to their surviving relatives, expressing their apologies and seeking forgiveness, but the wounds were deep and forgiveness was hard to come by. Outside the prison walls, the community continued to grapple with the aftermath of the killings, the victim's families struggled with grief and loss, trying to make sense of this senseless act. The media continued to cover the case, focusing on the impact of the sentence and the ongoing rehabilitation efforts for Alex. The trial raised questions about mental health, the legal system, and the responsibility of parents in preventing such tragedies. As the years passed, Alex's imprisonment took its toll. They experienced the harsh realities of life behind bars, navigating the challenges of confinement, isolation, and the loss of freedom. They reflected on their actions engaging in self-examination and therapy to address underlying issues that had led to the killings. Alex also took part in various rehabilitation programs offered in the prison, including anger management, cognitive behavioral therapy, and vocational training. They sought to better understand themselves and develop skills to manage their emotions and behaviors. Despite their efforts at rehabilitation, Alex faced many challenges. They struggled with guilt and shame, grappling with the enormity of their actions and the irreparable damage caused. They also faced hostility from some fellow inmates who were aware of their crime, which added to their sense of isolation. Alex's mental health continued to be a concern, and they received ongoing psychiatric care and support to manage their condition. As time passed, Alex's demeanor began to change. They showed signs of remorse and genuine sorrow for their actions. They wrote letters of apology to the victims' families, expressing deep regret and taking full responsibility for their actions. They showed a willingness to make amends and sought opportunities to give back to the community such as participating in restorative justice programs and speaking to young people about the consequences of violence. These efforts were met with mixed reactions from the public, with some showing empathy and forgiveness, while others remained skeptical. Despite the challenges, Alex remained committed to their rehabilitation. They developed a strong support system within the prison, including mentors, counselors, and fellow inmates who had turned their lives around. 
They engage in educational programs and develop new skills such as painting and writing. As outlets for their emotions, they also found solace in religion, seeking spiritual guidance, and engaging in practices that brought them peace and comfort. Years passed, and Alex's case was revisited for parole consideration. This time, their demeanor and actions spoke volumes. They had undergone a remarkable transformation, showing genuine remorse, taking responsibility for their actions, and demonstrating a commitment to rehabilitation. The victims' families also spoke on Alex's behalf, expressing forgiveness and acknowledging their efforts towards redemption. So that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so that you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section down below. Stay tuned, and we'll catch you in the next video.